last time that you tried to find an answer to something? I know many of you are back to the school for the first time this week, which, by the way, how was that for those of you who returned this week? Was it good? Was it like, eh, was it like, I'm just glad to be around people again? Like, yeah? So, so uh, when was the last time you had to search somewhere for an answer? Maybe, maybe you were watching a movie with your family, and you're like, oh, who, who is that person? Where, where have I seen them? And so you get out your phone, you pull out IMDb, and you start searching, like, where you've seen that person and other stuff before. Or, or maybe it's like, you know, how many of you are sports fans? You like to, to follow the game, what's going on? You, you, I know you're always pulling up the score. You're like, what's the score right now? I'm going to look it up right now. And you, you pull it up to try to find the answer to something. Uh, if I'm honest, I, I look to Google first. YouTube second. Those are my first two places that I look for anything. Like, any, anybody else use anything else other than those two things? Bing. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, you're that guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so you, you go and you look at Google or you go to YouTube and you look up. I, when I need a quick answer for something like that, like the score or something, I'll go to Google. But if I'm looking for, like, how to do something, I'll go to YouTube. So I, I do a lot of house projects. Chelsea and I have fixed up our last house, and we're doing a lot of house projects right now. And I've been on YouTube constantly looking up different ways to do things because I need the answer, and I need to know how to do it, and I need to do, know how to do it correctly. Now, follow-up question. How many of you have searched for an answer, you found an answer, you followed it through to the conclusion of the answer, but it wasn't the answer for you? And you turned out that you were doing it wrong the whole time because you found a bad resource. I've been that way, and it's especially damaging when you're doing something like electrical work in the house. You end up getting shocked or starting fires, and it's just not good. Fortunately, I have not done the second one, but I have gotten shocked before, and it's not fun, and it, it gives you a little bit of a jolt. <laughs> in fact, there was one recently where I just, just not to be real graphic or anything, but I, I was down there, and Chelsea had a friend that was down there, and we were in the basement, and I was working on something, and I forgot to turn the power off, and so I'm changing out an outlet, and I, and I zapped myself and farted really loud, and, and, and they all looked over, and I was just like dying on the ground in pain, laughing, because I lost control of my faculties at that moment, and so that just, sometimes if you don't follow the directions, shut off the power. If you don't follow the directions, you will, you'll wind up, you know, humiliating yourself or getting the wrong answer, and just, you know, it's, it's not good, but if, if we're being honest, sometimes when it comes to the Bible, we read the Bible like it's the magic book of answers to tell us everything about life. And I believe in most ways it is. But if we're honest, there's some ways that the Bible is not meant to be used in order to give you the answer for your specific situation. Like if I want to know how to shut off the power to my house and not shock myself or embarrass myself, that answer is not going to be in the Bible. It's not the right place to look, right? And I think we all get that. But when it comes to God fix my problems. Sometimes we use the Bible just as a last resort when we need an answer for something. And we don't read the Bible when we just want to get to know God better. We don't read the Bible when things are good. We just go to the Bible when we have a problem and we need an answer. And when we do that, sometimes we wind up getting answers we weren't looking for. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not a good thing. Sometimes it can cause us to read something into the passage that we're, we're reading because of our circumstance, when in reality, that's not what God was actually saying in that context. Does that make sense? Sometimes we're looking for an answer, and so we go to the Bible, and sometimes the Bible doesn't have the answer we're looking for. And so a question I would pose to you is, what is the Bible to you? Is it your third search after Google and YouTube? Is it where you go when you need answers? Is it where you go when you want to know God? Is it, where does it rank in, in your, uh, your ranking of authority in your life? Does, it, does what the Bible say give you answers for something that is, like, if it says it, you believe it? Or is it something that, like, if it says something you agree with, you like it? And if it doesn't say something you agree with, you don't like it? You know, where, where does the Bible rank when it comes to how you view the authority that it has in your life? Maybe you turn to the Bible when you have questions, and, and, and maybe you've been in situations before, like me, where you find what you actually really like, and, and, and the Bible's encouraging, and, and it gives you an answer for something that you're specifically asking for prayer for, and you get to that moment, and you go, oh, that's just what I needed to hear. Maybe you went to Psalms in a time where you were grieving and David's words just encouraged you. Maybe you, you went to the book of James and James had some very specific instruction for something that was going on in your life and you're like, I need to do this. And it was confirmation. 
Or, or maybe you were reading one of Paul's letters and, and he, you know, he encourages the believers in a certain way and it makes you feel like, ah, oh, yes, I can do all things. No matter what's going on right now, I can make it through because God is on my side. I've learned to be content in everything. We talked about that verse a couple weeks ago. But sometimes, if we're honest, when we search through the Bible, uh, if it doesn't tell us something that we want to hear, it doesn't give us the answers that we want, we get frustrated. How many of you have been in that boat before? I have, where you, you want the answers, you go to find the answers, and you can't find the answers. Or you want the answer to be a certain thing, but you go and look, and the answer is actually not what you were hoping it would be. It's more convenient to not really view the Bible as a credible, as a credible source when it doesn't tell you what you want to hear. You know, and, and so sometimes we get frustrated when we don't find the answers we want or the direct answers we're looking for. Uh, and, and so that's usually when we start looking in other places. We start asking the friends the, uh, their advice that we have. And we ask our friends, you know, what do you think about the situation? You keep asking around until you find somebody who'll tell you what you want to hear and tell you to, and give you the advice that you want to get in order to justify what you actually want to do, even if you know it's probably not the best decision. That's when we start going to YouTube and start looking up answers from people who have no idea sometimes what they're talking about. There's a lot of people on YouTube. I follow a lot of people on YouTube that are really credible sources and know what they're talking about, and they're great. Some people, though, they're just getting on YouTube and they're spewing their life experience, which might be similar to your life experience, but they're not going to tell you any truth. They're going to tell you what they've experienced and probably what you want to hear. So you've got to be careful where you go for your answers. At some point, I bet each one of us has asked ourselves the question, why would I read the Bible when I can just find the answers to all my issues on the internet? I've, as I've gotten older, I've wondered if that's true. Now, sometimes we Google scripture verse 4, and then we type in whatever we're, we're struggling with. And so you're using the internet and the Bible. Then you just got to make sure you're reading it in context, like we've talked about. But why would, why would we use the Bible first? When it's so much easier, so much more convenient, when we can just go straight to Google or YouTube to look up the answers for what we're going through. That's a valid question. If you've asked that, you know, then you're probably just like everybody else in this room. But what I want to talk about today is when it comes to kind of like, I, I, what is the Bible to you? Is it the place where you, you get all your answers? Is it the place that you view as like, is it an authority in your life? meaning that what it says you follow? Or is it, is it something that you look to to make you feel better? And when it doesn't make you feel better, you change your own perspective to make the Bible fit into what you're going through rather than, you know, fitting what you're going through into what the Bible actually says. And this, this passage, this book right here, uh, the verse we're going to read today, I think is very important because it actually does come from a psalm. It comes from David, and he's writing uh, in the Psalms. And he, when he wrote this, he, he didn't actually know that it was going to have the impact that it does have to where we are reading this today, 3,000 years later. And, and when we're reading his words, where sometimes his words in the book of Psalms, he doesn't write all the Psalms, but he writes most of them. And, and a lot of times his words are coming out of grieving. You know, God, this is happening, but I trust you. Or God, this is happening, help me to trust you. Or, or sometimes it's repentant. It's God, you know, I've done wrong. Forgive me. Don't leave my presence because of my wrongdoing. Sometimes it's just, it's wisdom and it's good advice from King David. And so in one of his writings, this, this is what he says when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to how we should view God's word. This is what he says in Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. That, that's what the Bible is. That's what your word is. It's a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Think just for a second about light, right? Whenever you guys get home from a long day, and maybe you get home, especially in the winter when it gets dark earlier, and you go home, and you run upstairs, you go to your room, you flip the light on, right? First thing you do, because if you didn't, what would happen? You, you would trip over all the dirty laundry you haven't picked up, right? You, you, you would trip over, you know, the Legos that you've left out, which, you know, will hurt your feet immensely. And uh, oh, may, maybe it's just you've got all your homework everywhere and books everywhere, and so you're going to either ruin your homework or, or hurt your toe and trip and fall on your face and maybe all of the above. But you flip the light on first thing, right? Because you need to see. And it's kind of like 
when, when David is saying that the, the word is like a lamp for my feet, basically what he's saying is a, a lamp not only just illuminates your next steps so you know where to see, but it lights up the whole room. It, 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 lights, it allows you to see the big picture. Not just where do I step right here to make sure I don't step on anything, but it gives you a lay of the whole room so you know if you've got laundry there, there, and there, this is your path. Not that you just, it's clear here, so you start going this way, but oh no, there's a pile of laundry here and I can't go any further. Go back and start over, right? It's not just one step at a time. You get my, my point. The light illuminates the whole room so you can know where to go from the very beginning or at least have an idea of where to go. And so David is saying, the Bible has a way to light up your whole path, to give you the bigger picture and the direction to go. And oftentimes that's what we need. The reality is that the Bible helps us see more clearly. When things get blurry, when, when there's an outcry, when there's, when there's things going on in the world that don't make sense to us, and we want to know what God thinks about those things, His Word illuminates the path. His Word makes things more clear, helps us to understand everything that's going on in our world in the light of, uh, that God shines on it, in light of his perspective. Because the best way to know God, as we've talked about, is by reading the Bible. And the best way to know his perspective is to know him and spend time in his word. The Bible helps us see more clearly. But it also gives us wisdom. It allows us to, to understand, have uh, something called discernment. Have you guys heard that word before, discernment? It's the ability to discern when it comes to situations uh, not only what is good, but what is best, right? Because most of us can see good things, recognize good things when we see them, but to understand the big picture and how the pieces fit together and to just discern probably the best course of action, the best course of thinking, that, that's, that's a gift that takes some practice. And, and some, some people are naturally gifted with that. Some people, they have to really learn to use discernment, but the Bible gives us wisdom. It helps us see more clearly. Sometimes the Bible doesn't directly answer all the questions that we have. And in those times, that's where it's really good that we've spent time in it so that we know kind of the bigger picture. Because even if we don't have the specific answer for something we're looking for, the bigger picture will help us at least point us in the right direction. We can always find something that's helpful and encouraging and comforting in the Bible. Even if, if it's not the specific direct answer to the specific situation you're going through right now, it can bring you comfort and encouragement, and it can give you some direction. And that's, that's what's true. That's why it's so important to spend time in it, reading it, but also memorizing it. The, earlier in that chapter, in 119, this, this is what else David says. He says, I have hidden your word in my heart. Now, that means, simply put, I have memorized your words. I know what they say. I know them in my heart. I don't have to Google them. I don't, I don't have to run and find my, my references and my table of contents in the Bible. I don't have to go to the back and look at the index for key words and then go find. Anybody ever done that? Have you, most of you probably haven't had to do that because you have Google. But in the back of the actual, like, paper and bound Bible, there's an index with key words that you can, it's like the original Google for the Bible. It's awesome. So it, maybe, maybe you go there. But David is saying, I've hidden your words in my heart. The rest of the verse says, so that I might not sin against you. But the same is true, so that I might know your will, so that I might know your plans for my life. I've hidden your word in my heart. It's so important to memorize and spend time in God's word so that in the moment where we need discernment, we don't have to say, hang on, let me go check, right? We can often know at least where God is coming from and the general direction he wants us to go. And that's a great place to start. Remember, the Bible helps us see more clearly. So, a little bit of application. Things that I want you guys to do when it comes to spending time in God's Word. Something that you can even start this week is I want you to try just 10 minutes. Try 10 minutes a day. Just, you can look up, you know, start in the book of Psalms if you want, or start in John, which is a gospel. I think it's the best gospel. It's, it's my favorite. I'm, I'm biased towards it. But it, read one of the, the, the gospels. Read one of Paul's letters. Read the Bible. Just spend 10 minutes in it. Maybe it's, you focus on one chapter, or one verse, or one heading section. 
Focus on one thing. Read it for 10 minutes. Just kind of meditate on it. Think about it. Pray. Ask God to speak to you in those moments and just allow that to shape your thinking. Allow that to be hidden into your heart. Spend 10 minutes. Two, talk to someone about it. This is a really great opportunity for small groups. If you want to, if you, some of you I know have a group chat. If you don't have a group chat, then maybe that's something fun that you could talk about. Even, even if it's not officially with your small group, maybe with a group of friends that are with you that are in your small group. But talk to somebody, somebody where you can read something and say, hey, this is what I read today. Uh, what do you guys think of this? I'm, this is what sticks out to me. It's that easy. Talk to somebody who knows their stuff though. Talk to somebody, friends are good, but talk to somebody like your small group leader as well. If you have questions, if you need more guidance and understanding, we're all here for you. So talk with somebody. Number three is memorize it. Pick a verse. And often the YouVersion Bible app has like a verse of the day. If one comes up this week that you like, memorize it. And just hide it in your heart. Keep it in your heart. And it will influence your thinking, influence your thoughts. It will change your perspective, and the way that you go about life. Because the Bible does help us see more clearly. So as we, we wrap up this series, I want you to recognize that the Bible helps us to know God better. When we read it in context, it can help us in the situations that we're going through in our own lives. And, and it has the ability to transform us, has the ability to, to change us from the way that we treat one another, the way we handle relationships. And it can help us see more clearly. So as we, we close, this is the question I have for you. What part of my day would be the best time to read the Bible? I want you to think about that. I'm going to pray, and then you guys will be dismissed to your small groups.